This thing, surprisingly, so far so good. Works like hot damn. It's even got a barbecue. Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today at Treat Especial on the healing bench, or rather the necropsy table. The BioLite little camp stove, what uses sticks and twigs, nuts and twigs and so forth, to make a fire to heat your coffee up. Surprisingly, now this, we have not taken it a part before we had a go at her. Took this on the Bower and Lakes Trail. Surprisingly robust. I didn't think this would last not even half a shift, but it made the full pull and we used it as a campfire band buster. Essentially what this is, it's a camp stove, but instead of packing fuel with you, you go and you collect nuts and twigs and so forth, burn them in there, and then it also has a Seebeck generator. Now, pedantry aside, that, that's what the, the internet needs just, just to be complete. The, the final touch is just one more pedantic fuckboy. It is not a Seebeck generator in here. It does not generate Seebecks. It generates electricity using the Seebeck effect. So you can charge up your cameras and your cell phones and all that sort of stuff using this BioLite stove. We're going to see how that works, but also we're going to see the failure modes of this thing. Here's the module what does the magic dance, you pixies dance. What it does, it's got a battery in there and a squirrel cage fan here. And that blows air around the periphery. It's a supercharger essentially. And then you can go ahead, once that battery is charged or, you know, up to a certain amount, you can use that USB to charge your other stuff. So pretty interesting idea. And surprisingly, it works. It works quite well, actually. We're gonna do a rhinoplasty prior too, however. We'll just check. Clearly, some glass fiber reinforced plastic here. I would assume this is PA6. There's no markings on it. It could be PA66 if they're really worried. If, if they're not too worried about cost, they can increase that to the 6.6 and it gets better resistance to heat. As we can see here, she's starting to get a little toasty up here, but otherwise hasn't melted into a blob. I had assumed, you know, at first glance, this thing was a piece of junk and it would melt into a blob. However, pleasantly surprised. We're in like sin. <laughs> yeah, nice little surprise here. I was expecting a poly lipo pack, the flat pack ones, ubiquitous silver packs. And here we have an 18650 cell. And a nice how do you do. Built in, well, double redundancy, belt and sussy spenders. We have current, we have protection for the cell built in into that wrap. And we also have temperature sensing going back into the confuser to make sure that this thing isn't getting too hot. Double redundancy. No differential characteristics on any of these Molex, so being sure to mark them. A little battery we'll pull that out so here's the Seebeck generator generating oodles and oodles of Seebecks little stainless steel heat shield here and some felt oh no that's not felt that's yeah it only looks like felt that is fiberglass insulation oddly phallic this thing is we peeled back the foreskin here and the thing is short but it sure is skinny this of course is just gonna be a heat sink or a heat transfer mechanism that takes the heat from the fire. So this thing is great, and we got the we got the numbers off it. Even better, we got the numbers off it, off this cute little Seebeck array. We can see the arrangement here, two differential metals connected to the hot side and the cold side. The delta between them, the, the difference in temperature between them is what creates the electricity through the mechanism of JFM. And we can see this is a high therm brand. No, no, that's mirrored. So this membrane, this heat transfer membrane on here, that is a high therm membrane. Seems high end to me. I've never seen the kind of metalized like that. And this, of course, is that huge heat sink, what allows air to flow over it and cool it and keep that differential. That's the critical thing, is the bigger that delta can be, the bigger the difference between the hot side and the the hot side and the cold side, the more the more pixies you're gonna get through there What for charging your iPhone up. Here's the hot side probe, die cast aluminum, and it's got a slot in there What for increasing the surface area to transfer that heat quicker. 
which begs the question, why wouldn't you use a heat sink on that side? I'm guessing probably because the localized heat um, wouldn't sink. You don't have enough thermal mass there and you'd actually end up melting some, an array like this. Uh, whereas this is not prone to, it's very unlikely you're gonna melt this in a wood fire. Maybe if you stuck a little bit of oil in there or some coal, you'd probably get her hot enough to, to melt it, but otherwise, no. So that is why we have a big probe on this side and heat sinking on the other side because we're not worried about this other side. I mean, look at the huge surface area there to interact with the air flowing over it, but you're not worried about this side melting because this is the cool side. Here's the supercharger squirrel cage induction motor with that same material, PA66, glass fiber reinforced seems to be, and a Delrin or ABS impeller, you know, what, a turbine, turbine, a yeah, tiny little motor, three to 5.9 volts. That might be a, oh God, five, two or three watt max motor on there. No, it'd have to be less than that because this guy only outputs nominally according to the documentation uh, three watts so this is likely be a watt or half a watt and it's amazing what a little extra airflow will do one problem we see here there's no mitigation for dust you're getting all kinds of conductive dust in there on the pcb that of course is uh, burned up dead tree carcass sick as it is to think about now we'll take off the pcb board <laughs> <laughs> and have a look at that. Here's the brains of the operation. Very minimalist design. A little bit disappointed. There's no conformal coating. Conformal coating is essentially a paint or a, a lacquer they put on there. And that just prevents big gobs of water from getting in there, corroding the connections and destroying the thing. Of course, just natural water isn't going to hurt electricity at all as long as uh, these components, as long as there's not powered and they short out. So you know, a little bit of moisture, you're, you're camping, you're going to expect a little bit of moisture in there. So really disappointing to not see any conformal coating whatsoever. We have an SD micro devices. This is the brain box. And we have another appears to be some sort of operational amplifier, but it might be a battery charge. The battery charge controller is probably built right into this. And then this is probably an operational amplifier in order to uh, get the signals coming in, the temperature probes and, and the battery management and all that. Here's the power supply on this side, uh, switch mode power supply, a couple inductors and all the regular stuff, decoupling capacitors. We can see that they always do the design with more uh, capacitive decoupling than they really need and then pair back. So we can see that effect right here you add capacitors until you get it working and then you start taking capacitors out until it doesn't work and so here we see they've omitted now the bomb cost of that the bill of materials cost of that would be like a, a couple pennies a penny and you can see the economy of scale here they are trying to save a penny by omitting that it just the mind boggles when you look at the scale of how many of these things get built and, and how tight they are on their electronics. Here we have a, a half size tactile switch. We have the footprint for a bigger, much bigger electrolytic capacitor, but they've gone with a, a smaller cap because, because they can, they can get away with it. Here's the indicator board, just a whole bunch of LEDs and some choke resistors or uh, uh, current limiting resistors. And this is what actually tells you what goes on and off. So we see here why we need now so many pins on this because we have so many LEDs here. So very likely in a lot of cases, not all the pins on this brain box gets used, but it's just, that's the part they're gonna use. So they, they just have a whole bunch of unused outputs. In this case, it appears like we're very likely using just about every input and output. I wasn't able to find this particular Seebeck array. This would be a TEG, a thermoelectric generator. This is a proper one, not a not a crap one off Fleabay. You can get the, the labeled TEGs, but they end up being TECs, which are thermoelectric coolers, and you don't have nearly the juice for your chotch as you do with a proper Seebeck array. 
what they use these for is uh, aerospace and whatnot, stuff that needs to last a long time and have lots of power. A radioactive source on the one side that heats it up and the coldness of space on the other side that cools it down and you charge your batteries that way. These things, pricey as hell from, from reputable sources, something this size in onesies be about 50 bucks. So this is very likely one of the most expensive components in this whole system. Looking at this guy, this is an ARM Cortex. It's a 32-bit microcontroller from ST Electron, as well as this one's from ST. And it's, as I said, a, a op amp, high gain op amp. What that is probably used for is two thermocouples, which is the opposite. No, which is using the Seebeck effect. A thermocouple is two differential metals. You heat them up, weird shit happens. Then that guy, that signal gets amplified by there, gets chotched into there, and then this guy decides what to do with the fan. Either turn it up if it's not hot enough, or turn it down if it's getting too hot, because you don't want to melt your dingus end right off. Let's have a look at the burning module. This is all stainless steel. Of course, what grade is stainless steel? We'll have a look at that. Kind of chintzy bent aluminium legs. I guess they chose aluminium for weight, but then stainless steel. You can't really do this with aluminium because it'd melt and burn. One thing I do not like, which is super chintzy, everything's riveted. And not with good rivets either. All aluminium rivets, tiny little guys. All, yeah, got a terminal case of the Weeble Wobbles already. So this stainless steel would be, well, we don't know. Let's check to see if it's magnetic. Oh yeah, it's very magnetic. Okay, so that means that this is not Austinetic uh, 304 series. Doesn't have a whole lot of chromium, doesn't have a whole lot of carbon in it. So it could be martensitic, which is what your blades are made out of because it hardens, or it could be ferritic because ferritic is the cheapest and it's also the least corrosion resistant of any of the stainless steels which we see because when we heat it up and that's the same thing in your gas barbecue you know how the the baffles are always burning or the the uh, burners themselves are always rotten out it's because it's cheap ferritic stainless steel um well put your five point harness on here we're going to go full dorkgasm on the steel All right, I'm gonna put this together. Now we saw the magic. It's not just the Pelche or the Seebeck element because when you're charging your phone, it's not charging off of this. What it's doing, this guy, is trickle charging the 18650 cell. That's the magic because this would take forever to charge up your phone, but because it's trickle charging this constantly whenever this is running, then this essentially is a big overweight boost pack. Uh, the only thing is you can make a fire with it whereas and cook your food with it whereas you know a boost pack it's just you can't do that reassembling here i'm seeing some stuff i really don't like interesting thing it's built it's designed for manufacture kudos to them it's easy to put together that lowers their overall cost hopefully they pass that on to the customer but there's some stuff here that would really do well to have some celastic, uh, some, some, even some silicone, something that won't burn. Put some silicone, if you own this, just take that lid off and put some silicone to glue some of this stuff together. Like all these Molex connectors, they're kind of loosey-goosey in there. The, the <laughs> this LED board, it's not affixed positively. There's no screws or anything. Give it a dab of glue, 18650, rattle trapping around, that's never good. The leads are right up against, like toy, toy, up against here. So a little celastic on the wires, keep everything from rattling around too, too much. You're going to be hiking with this thing, it's in a backpack. You know how you throw those things around. Just, it's, it's the little things, it just needs a little extra. Well, I ain't going outside to start a fire, and I sure as hell ain't taking the long dirt nap. So we're going to actuate this with a torch. Here's the trouble though. I wouldn't rely on this as your primary heat source. You don't want this standing between you and your morning coffee on account of the pixies. It's pixie controlled. Some electronical doodad in there doesn't feel like waking up in the morning. You're fucked. So 
here we just had it apart it was showing two bars now it's showing fuck all won't even run so now we got to get this thing hot to get the battery charged so that it will actually turbo charge that will get that little fan going you know so what we got to do here is we got to get this thing well we can charge this thing up here in the shop but otherwise we would have to heat it up and try and get it going i'll tell you what instead of charging it let's try and heat it up to get it going you know what they should do is they should have an override so that what they're protecting the 18650 lithium cell to not go under voltage but if they have an override here then you could just get it chooching to charge the battery up what you'd want is a replaceable 18650 just have it like a a, a door you know like a double a or even have a double a pack to allow it yeah she won't go this is bad news man she won't chooch no way no how i guess we gotta go that that yeah that'll screw you man that will totally screw you we're having a failure to chooch here got her on the charge air and this standing between you and your wife's sleepy time tea ain't no fucking good at all Thumbs down on that one. It was fun while it lasted. It was just the battery crapped out. Now she no go. I wouldn't rely on this, obviously. Yeah, wouldn't rely on this as a sole heat source. Bring along your Primus stove. For funsies by the side of the road, making lattes and so forth for your film friend Fox. Yeah, maybe. I was uh, I was I will say I was pleasantly surprised at how well this lasted and I enjoyed the campfire band buster aspect of it. Unfortunately, it's dead now. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.